Hello, I'm Mr. Dove, and this is Bio Lessons to Go, DNA Structure and Replication. DNA is replicated any time a cell is going to reproduce. This is necessary so that each new cell contains the necessary instructions. DNA replication will occur during the S phase of interphase of both mitosis and meiosis. S stands for synthesis. So during the S phase, uh, new DNA is going to be copied so that during the remainder of mitosis and meiosis, that genetic material can be then distributed to the daughter cells. When Watson and Crick determined the structure of DNA, um, they realized that there seemed to be a real simple way that DNA could replicate just based upon its generic structure. Um, they're quoted as saying, It has not escaped our notice that the specific pairings we have postulated immediately suggest a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. Basically, they realized that because DNA is a double helix and each side would be complementary to each other, it would make sense that one strand could actually be used as a template for the other. Much like we can take this photograph of me as a child eating some snow. So this is me. And we can take this photograph and use it to create a negative. And that negative then could be used as a template to make a brand new photograph. So the original can be used to make a brand new. So DNA can work pretty much the same way. Using base pairing rules a single strand of DNA can then be utilized as a template to produce its complementary strand. Wherever there's a T, we would have an A. Wherever there's an A, adenine, we would have thymine. Wherever there's C, cytosine, we'd have a guanine. And wherever there's a G, guanine, we'd have a cytosine. And so one strand could be our original strand and it's acting as a template, and then it's gonna allow us to produce a new strand. And so at the end, we'd have a completely uh, new strand of DNA that is double-stranded. The process of DNA replication will begin at sites called origins of replication. And what's gonna happen is the DNA is going to unzip, and it's gonna create these bubbles of uh, these replication bubbles. Now on a DNA strand there are numerous origins of replication. So replication is going to be happening at multiple sites um, on DNA. And the reason for this is because DNA is so long, um, in order to quickly copy it, um, instead of starting at one end and going to the other, uh, we start at multiple places and um, as the DNA replicates, those um, replication bubbles will merge to create finally our, our two new DNA molecules. And so over here, we've got a, a electron micrograph that shows these origins of replication and the replication bubbles that are forming on this uh, double-stranded DNA. DNA replication is an intricate process involving many steps and many various enzymes to orchestrate the process. For us today, we're going to simplify the process and examine four major steps of DNA replication and some of the major enzymes that are involved. The first step of DNA replication is unzipping and unwinding the DNA helix. This is done by an enzyme by the name of helicase. We know it's an enzyme because it ends in ACE, and it's named for what it does, unzipping the helix. As a result of unzipping the helix, what we get is a replication fork that is formed, kind of like a fork in the road. Now, prevent this uh, unzipped DNA from rezipping, uh, special proteins are going to attach to the surface of our replication fork to kind of stabilize. Um, that unzip DNA and preventing it from rewinding. Now, once we have unzipped our DNA, we're going to be able to add new free DNA nucleotides. 
This is going to be done by the enzyme DNA polymerase. We know it's an enzyme because it ends in ACE. And once again, it's named for what it does. It adds new DNA monomers to create a DNA polymer, new strands of DNA. Now, polymerase, because it's an enzyme, it's specific to one end. It's, uh, it's going to be able to attach to the three prime end and then add new nucleotide bases at the five prime. So as it produces the new strand, um, at the end is going to be a three prime. So it attaches to the three prime and adds new nucleotides uh, from the five prime to the three prime end. On one side, this is done continuously, and we call this the leading strand. Now, if you remember, DNA is anti-parallel. So the sides of the DNA go in opposite directions. So unfortunately, on the other side of the DNA, the three prime end is on up on the other side. So we have to wait to unzip the DNA in order for the polymerase to attach, and it kind of works backwards creating little pieces or fragments of DNA, which are called Okazaki fragments. It attaches to the three prime end and works to the five. Once again, it's still adding new five prime bases um, and then ending with three prime ones. The final step is we want to join those fragments together. And because we don't want to have like one complete strand of DNA and one strand which contains fragments. In order to join those fragments, we're going to use an enzyme called ligase. It's an enzyme because it ends in ACE, and it's named for what it does. It pieces together, it sticks things together. L lig. Um, remember ligaments? Ligaments connect bone to bone. Well, ligase is going to be our DNA glue. It's going to allow for the Okazaki fragments to be able to come together. So the reason that we have those differences is because DNA is anti-parallel. The one side, the leading strand, the DNA polymerase is able to attach and work continuously. While on the other side, we have to wait until we've unzipped a bit so that we can access the three prime end and work backwards discontinuously, producing those Okazaki fragments. The one that's produced continuously is called the leading strand. The one that's produced discontin discontinuously is called our lagging strand. The way you might think about this is because this one is being done continuously, it would be finished first. And so it's leading the way. Well, the other one is going to lag behind because we have to wait till it's unzipped before we can start adding new bases. In order to really understand the process of replication, let's take a look at a basic animation of the process so that we can see the basic steps and how the enzymes um, that are involved work. So our first step is that DNA helicase is going to unzip our DNA. Um, the little yellow uh, proteins are going to keep the DNA open so that we can start adding new bases. On the top, um, DNA is being synthesized continuously. Polymerase attaches to the three prime end and begins to build um, a new strand of DNA. On the bottom, um, a special start is being produced by an enzyme uh, called RNA primase. This uh, offers a site so that polymerase can attach to the three prime end and kind of work backwards, uh, producing DNA segments discontinuously. Our leading strand on the top continues to produce um, a complete strand of DNA, while on the bottom we're producing Okazaki fragments. We don't want the fragments and so DNA ligase comes in and completes the replication process so that we end up with two identical strands of DNA. Eventually all of the replication bubbles will merge, which will give us two completely double-stranded daughter DNA molecules. Since each new DNA molecule is made from one original strand and one new strand, the process is said to be semi-conservative. To conserve means to keep. 
and we didn't keep all of the DNA, we only kept one side to use as a template. So we kept part. So it's called semi-conservative. The process of DNA replication is essential for the life of a cell. Before a cell can divide, it must copy the DNA exactly so that each daughter cell contains the essential instructions for the life of the cell. Any mistake could result in cancer, or in the case of meiosis, perhaps a genetic defect. So it's amazing how many times our cells replicate and copy the DNA that we don't end up with more errors. Hope we learned a lot about DNA replication. Um, next time, we're actually going to be looking at um, the concept of mutation and how errors can crop up in DNA and their effects.